Welcome to the second series of the stories behind the songs with Dave Kittle. Back in 1979, Dave began a radio career at Shea 106 in Ottawa, which spanned 17 years. He was one of the on-air voices that I grew up listening to, and he introduced me to new music that literally changed my life. His knowledge and passion for music are inspiring, to say the least. And in this 12-part podcast, Dave talks about eight of his favorite songs and the history of how those songs came to be. So pull up a chair and join us for the stories behind the songs. Let's talk about uh, a, a classic song okay. that has been played ad nauseum on the radio. All right. But still remains one of the great songs of all time, and I'm referring to Light My Fire by The Doors. Okay. A very interesting song. Um, the Doors, of course, a Los Angeles-based foursome that came together one day when um, two uh, UCLA film students by the name of uh, Ray Manzarak mm -hmm. and Jim Morrison happened to run into each other on Venice Beach in Los Angeles. And they struck up a conversation, and uh, Jim Morrison had written some poetry, and uh, Ray Manzarek liked the poetry and said, we should form a band. And that's basically what they did. <laughs> oh, wow, just like they that. Formed, they formed a band. Yeah. Uh, Manzarek was a keyboard player, yeah. had done some keyboard work. Uh, they recruited a couple of, of guys that he knew, uh, a drummer by the name of John Densmore and a guitarist by the name of Robbie Krieger. And started rehearsing and uh, recorded their debut album uh, in just under a month on a four track tape machine at Sunset Sound in Los Angeles in the fall of 1966. And uh, it was released in January of 1967. Uh, it is a uh, 11 tracks on the album and it is regarded as one of the great debut albums of all time uh, and included the quintessential song Light My Fire, okay. a song written by Robbie Krieger, the guitar player, but credited to all four members of the band. Uh, okay. One of the things I always liked about The Doors that not very many other bands did, you 2 are, are one that come to mind, that listed all four members of the band as writers, even though one person came up with the, the yeah. basic idea for the song. <clears throat> and I've always liked that because when you... You have the basic gem, ger, germ, germination of a song, an idea for a song, but you go into the studio re to record it, and everybody contributes to the overall yeah. uh, finished product of that song. Yeah, I think that they should all get credit. They for, should. They should get credit Absolutely. for the writing of it. But the Doors were one band, one band that always credited all of their material to the four guys right. in the band from the beginning. Basically. From the beginning, right, right. Um, a great song, as you know. Um, inter a couple of interesting things about Light My Fire is uh, the, uh, there's, the the Doors didn't have a bass player. They had a keyboard player, a guitar player, and a drummer. And okay. the bass player, Ray Manzarak, played bass on uh, the pedals of an organ. Gotcha. Okay. And the original Light My Fire was recorded like that uh, in the studio with him playing bass on the pedals of a Hammond B3 organ, as well as playing his other organ. Yeah. And later on, their producer, Paul Rothschild, had Larry Nechtel, one of the Wrecking Crew, come in and overdub a, a, a second bass line on that song to give it a little bit more punch, yeah. which he did. And uh, it was the, uh, the second single. It wasn't the first single from the album. The first single, uh, the song Break On Through to the Other Side didn't chart at all. And Light My Fire was the second single released from the album and uh, was a massive, huge hit. Went to number one. Mm -hmm. The other, but the interesting thing about that was uh, the song was edited down from its original seven minute plus yes. version on the album. Most of that being a keyboard solo. Most of that being a keyboard <laughs> yeah. solo in the middle. Yeah. It was edited down to just under three minutes in length to be played on AM radio. Right. And uh, it uh, it spent three weeks uh, three weeks on the Billboard charts, and um, that was just one of several songs that I could think of that were edited down. Uh, you can't always get what you want by the Rolling Stones, which was the flip side of Honky Tonk Woman. Right. Okay. Was edited down. Uh, Won't get fooled again by the Who was edited down. Right. 
Uh, there were quite a few a actually that were that were edited right. down because AM radio back in the day yeah. would not play anything more than three minutes. Right. Yeah. That and that's why cool. a song like uh, "Like a Rolling Stone" by Bob Dylan was such a monumental song because it was a massive hit, but Dylan refused to allow it to be edited down, so it was released in its original form of right. five and a half minutes, and was one of the first songs, if not the first song. <clears throat> to break the three-minute top 40 barrier of radio back yeah. in the day. Wow. And um, another, the other thing about uh, Ho Jose Feliciano also had a massive hit with the song Light My Fire. Uh, about a year after the Doors version, Jose Feliciano put out a, a, a version of it and um, uh, did very well. He won a Grammy Award for his version of uh, Light My Fire. Wow. But yes, and of course, the Doors um, went on to make what, five albums altogether before they flamed out in the early 70s? They were only together for five years. Wow, that's amazing. 67, yeah. not even five years. 67, they released their first album in January 1967. And um, they were done by the LA Woman, came out in 70, 1970, I believe. Okay. And then Jim Morrison uh, sort of was estranged a bit from the band for a while and decided he needed to take a break and move to Paris with his girlfriend, and uh, that's where he died. Yeah. At the age of 27. But, yeah, so young, eh? Yeah, they were a great band, The Doors. Very, yeah. very um, interesting and unique uh, unique sounding band, a keyboard, and, uh, and uh, when they played the Light My Fire, the famous story about them playing Light My Fire on the Ed Sullivan Show, um, Ed Sullivan's producer um, asked them if they would not sing the line Girl, we couldn't get much higher because they thought it was, uh, re was yeah. referencing to drugs. Yeah. And uh, they agreed to do that. Yeah. And then at the last minute when they performed it live on the show, Morrison sang the, the line. line. Yeah. And, and yeah. Ed Sullivan was furious, of course, after the show. And apparently stormed into their dressing room after the show and pointing his finger going, You told wow. me you wouldn't do that. And, and you'll never, you'll never play the Ed Sullivan show again. And Morrison famously went said back to Ed Sullivan, "Yeah, but we we've already played the Ed Sullivan show." <laughs> and they never played the Ed Sullivan yeah. show again. Well, of course, the Ed Sullivan show back in the day was was the, the yeah. premier place yeah. for anybody, yeah. any rock band to get exposure back in the day. Even more so than radio, you played the Ed Sullivan show, you were seen that's right right across the country. The same thing was if you were on Carson. If you were on Carson, that's right. you'd made it as a, so, as a so. comic. As a comic, as a or comedian, a, yeah, yeah. But uh, Carson, Johnny Carson, didn't have a lot of rock music on no, his show. No, no, no. Didn't no. have a lot of music, a lot of musicians on his show. Um, but yeah, if you were a comic and you played the Carson yeah. show, that was pretty well was your, your 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 ticket. You made it, yeah. And uh, yeah, and but the Ed Sullivan show back in the day, because there were there was there was nowhere basically to be seen back then. Yeah, you, you heard them on the radio, you saw their pictures in magazines, but. You actually saw the band That's performing, right. yeah, and and most of them played live. Yeah, most of the time they played live on the Ed Sullivan Show, which was a very cool thing. Question for you: When you were uh, DJing back on Shea, which was FM radio, it was. Um, I'm guessing you probably played "Light My Fire" numerous times, many times. So my question would be: Did you play the unedited down <clears throat> version of the song? No. You did not. No, we always played the full version of it. Well, that's what I meant. Because that's because meant. FM radio, you could get away well, with that. Well, that's what I meant. Yeah, you it played was, the whole thing, yeah, and, that's right. and that was just the way it was. That's and... right. I remember one time, uh, well, this was this was many, many years later, uh, there was a song by Supertramp called, uh, let me see, let me see. it's going to come to me here. Give a little bit? No. Uh, it's got that, that... School? No, it's got that beautiful 12-string guitar extra there. Um, uh, oh. Oh. It'll come to Even me. Even in the quietest moments? No. A, a give a little... Was it give a little bit? Well, give that's, a little that's bit what I... Yeah, that was the first one I no. said. No. Anyway, I can't... I can't... It, 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 it'll come to me. But anyway, there there was a... a fa there was a... They, they, they came up with an edited version of that. Okay. That was played on uh, AM radio. Okay. Uh, that cut out part of it. And we used to play the... the, 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 the f when, when, it, when we first started playing it, if my memory serves me correctly, we played the edited version of it. And okay. I remember our program director at the time, Steve Caldwell, came in one day and got a nasty letter from somebody or a nasty call from somebody saying, why are you playing the edited version of this song? It's you're cheating your listener, your listeners. And they stopped doing that. 
they stopped playing they, the edited version of it. Yeah. But yeah, there was there was there was I can't it'll come to me. I can't think of the song okay. off the top of my head, but yeah. My, you know what? Uh, because of Shea 106, because of you, because of all the the, the people there. I remember when uh, you played a whole Alan Parsons program mm -hmm. uh, album when I Robot came out, uh, and you played uh, Here's Side A, and that when mm -hmm. that was done, you did a commercial Here's Side Here's B. Here's Side B. And uh, did I not go out and buy it the next day? Probably. And then every other yeah. Alan Parsons album that, mm -hmm. that had been. I mean, I'm just saying, man, th those. Those are good memories, really good memories. Well, that was a nice thing about FM radio, which, uh, you know, progressive FM radio, which was started in San Francisco in, in the mid sixties, the great, the legendary Tom Donahue, um, in San Francisco. And then, um, the, 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 cause you could play whatever you wanted and you could play album tracks and you could play all kinds of different stuff. And you didn't have to play the edited version of these songs yeah. because uh, AM radio uh, was uh, was so hit driven. You had to play so, so many songs. That's right. <clears throat> excuse me, so many songs per hour. Yeah. And if you played a seven minute song, that just did not fit in the format. Yeah. So they would play those edited versions down, and uh, "Light My Fire" was one of them. Yeah, I, I remember. I, you, you hear a song on AM back then, and then you'd buy the record, uh, and you'd you'd be like, "What the? I never heard this, but this must be a different." Mm -hmm. ver and you just you know, then it started to make sense. Oh, okay, yeah. so they're cutting shit out yeah. specifically for radio. Yeah. yeah, that's unfortunate. You would still hear that sometimes, even in the last uh, several years, on uh, oldies AM oldies radio stations. Uh, if you would hear a song like Light My Fire, mm -hmm. they would play the edited oh, version of, course, of it. Yeah. They, they would play will. the edited yeah. version of it. Yeah. yeah. Which very, was, very uh, interesting. Yeah. But uh, a great, uh, great uh, band. Um, great song, great album, that first Doors album. Yeah. And uh, it, uh, an interesting song, Light My Fire. You've been listening to the stories behind the songs with Dave Kittle. Join us again for the next part in this series. Brought to you by Sunholes Music. Download the latest album now at sunholes.com.